here we are in the car. A light drizzle outside. So I couldn't help myself but to come out to make a car video. Uh, the, perhaps the main reason I'm making this video is to let you know a couple of things that might interest you. Uh, first of all, Money Your Friend, the book that I released at the very end of last year, is uh, should now, first of all, I think be free uh, in most countries. You should be able to get the digital ebook version of the book for free um, in most countries. I will put a link below. If for some reason you don't already have that book, most of you watching probably, probably already do have the Kindle or ebook version of it. Um, but it should be free or very close to free in most countries now. And alongside that, I want to let you know that there's now an audiobook version of Money Your Friend available. Uh, I was going to do the narration myself. It turned into far too much of a pain in the ass. And um, my normal narrator, our scheduling was a little bit off. And I think, honestly, a lot of this was fortuitous because it turns out that I used AI. Audible allows you to now use AI. Or they have a new program, which I took part of. And um, Money Your Friend is, 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 is AI narration. And I think it actually sounds pretty damn good, to be honest with you. Much better than um, what many of you probably would expect. Uh, better than a lot of the, you know, person narrators that I've heard do audiobooks recently, quite honestly. So Money Your Friend audiobook version should be available pretty much internationally, I think, at this point. Again, follow the link below. Click on the Amazon um, link. I'll put. I'll try to put the Audible link below as well. You you should be able to get the audiobook version of Money Your Friend. I think for for like two bucks, a dollar ninety nine, at least in the United States, and they're about a similar price in a lot of other countries. Uh, as long as you have the Kindle version, you should be able to get the Whisper Sync um, add on for like a dollar ninety nine. So keep that in mind. If you want a discount on the audio version of the book. One last bit of housekeeping. Um, for those of you who haven't already heard, um, we're going to have a free group coaching session this upcoming Tuesday, April 9th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to join us for our free group coaching session this Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, if you're part of my mailing list, you will get the Zoom link. If uh, if you're not part of my mailing list and you want the Zoom link, you can email me at info at radicalcounselor.com. Info at radicalcounselor.com. That's also where you can send emails for coaching inquiries or with general questions you have. So um, back to money your friend and I guess the meat of this video, if you will. What makes, I think, Money Your Friend a very interesting book and I think a helpful book for a lot of you. Certainly a helpful book for me as I wrote it and went over it and refined it. It took me a long time to write, even though it's short. Um, what makes it helpful, I think, for a lot of us is that the advice in that book about improving our... Uh, wealth mindset, our money mindset, our, our sense of inner abundance um, is very sober. And uh, I think that's what most people into these, um, you know, manifesting ideas need more of is sobering advice. Because usually this more sober advice is uh, more helpful when we get into this information and when we've been into this information for, for a little bit of time. At first, it might it might be very nice and, and good to be constantly 
invigorated and excited and inspired by um, very kind of like inspirational type of uh, manifesting advice about how like you can transform your whole life and you know you can manifest quote unquote anything you want and any change is possible. I think for a lot of people when they get into these ideas and maybe even the first year or two, they have they start reading about this stuff and they get excited. And that excitement can be a really good thing because at first they don't really believe that I can change my life in this way. How could this be possible? And then like, you know, after you're into this stuff and start reading about it or watching videos or listening to lectures, you're like, this, this might be possible. This makes more and more sense. And then I start to see maybe in my own life changes and I hear, I see examples of it actually working. And I'm like, my God, I can change my own life. I can use my imagination. I can direct my, my thinking and my emotions and how I feel inwardly to change things, uh, you know, in my world. And that's very exciting, very invigorating initially, I think, for a lot of us. However, um, you know, that's, you know, like, like Vidium Zalen talks about pendulums. That's like you're, you go to one far side of the pendulum and you have to go back or there's a boomerang effect and it has to come back. This excitement and inspiration and my whole life is going to change and this, you know, the bliss, all, all the ecstasy, all this stuff. In, in my experiences and in my opinion and in my observations is not uh, really an accurate portrayal of what a lot of these manifesting ideas are when they're applied. It's not like your life just goes on a perpetual upswing, at least for most people. It's much more like you learn that you do have a lot more power than perhaps you expected. A lot more power. A lot more um, say in your life and how you feel than you thought or expected before you got into these various manifesting ideas. But once you start to really believe that, what happens is you have to figure out, well, I believe this now and I've maybe had some success, you know, implementing some of the stuff in my life, but how do I integrate it more sustainably, more intimately into my whole being? And that's where a lot of the initial excitement and bliss and anything is possible type of outlook can be really uh, challenged when one realizes that integrating this stuff and applying it in the way you want is often not as easy as you would think or hope for and not as easy as some of these wonderful teachers sometimes make it sound. That's the sobering aspect. And I think most people watching this channel um, are probably at that type of uh, stage. If you're just into this stuff, relatively new into this stuff, and you're very excited about it, and like, you know, you, <laughs> you, you watch Law of Assumption channels or whatever, or, and, you know, you're trying to stay high vibe all the time and all these things. Um, Chances are this is not advice you are going to want to hear and you're not going to like it. And I see that all the time, like the people who are in that stage of finding out about these ideas and applying them, they, they don't like what I have to say usually. But the problem is for most folks in that stage, they will come to a point where they just, they realize that it's not working in the way they would like. And that might happen relatively quickly in a matter of months or it might take a couple of years. And some people will just keep on going and not, not feel that long-term gratification but, but push ahead and become dogmatic about applying the principles. You see this in the Neville community a lot. You see it in the Abraham Hicks community. Any, any spiritual community where people just – they've had some success. They believe in some of it and then they decide just to 
you know, put their stakes in and say, this is how it is, even though it's not working for them at all in the way they actually initially hoped for. But then there's most of us who get into these ideas long term, who believe in them, but also are willing to be flexible and willing to be honest with ourselves and to realize that, you know, perhaps one particular teaching or one particular approach or things that worked before are not necessarily going to work all the time. And we're more sober when we look at this stuff. My kids just came outside. They're going to go on their bikes. I'm going to join them. Money, your friend, is for people who want to look at this stuff soberly. And don't think that, you know, you're just going to become a wealth magnet overnight. You know? Most, there's a lot of good information out there and quite a few good current teachers who preach wealth mindset stuff well. And I've learned a lot from them. And I've spent thousands of dollars on various, you know, programs, you know, group coaching and stuff with some of these teachers. But what they're talking about, even the really good teachers of yesteryear and today, when it talks about what, when they talk about wealth mindset, in my opinion, it's not sober enough a lot of the time. And that's why you always hear me talking about Joel Goldsmith and his book, Invisible Supply, and his type of approach. And people like Raymond Charles Barker. People like H. M. Lee Cady. When they're talking about inner supply. Because their approach is mature. And it can be sobering. And it's not about you manifesting something. It's about you recognizing what you are. In a deep sense. And that is the universe... God, source, or whatever you want to call it that we obviously can't really put words to. So check out Money, Your Friend, if you haven't already. Listen to the AI audiobook version. I think you'll actually enjoy it. It's quite good. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know. You can join us for group coaching on Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Perhaps I'll see you there. I can be reached at info at radicalcounselor.com. Until next time.